the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. I acknowledge the Wongal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the country that I am recording from today. I recognise their continuing connection to the land and waters. I pay my respects to Elders past and present and extend that respect to all First Nation people listening today. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 103 of the Powerful Content Podcast. It's so lovely to have you here today. And today I'm looking forward to chatting with the amazing Jen Donovan about all things marketing your business. If you don't know Jen, she's a marketing thought leader a coach, a mentor, who is known for her impactful work in empowering small businesses with multiple best-selling books, including her brand new one, which I'm sure we will talk about in today's episode called Small Town, Big Impact, international speaking engagements and successful ventures like Social Media and Marketing Australia, Buy from a Bush Business and Spend with Us. She transforms clients from being invisible to invincible using her strategic marketing principles. Welcome to the podcast, Jen. Thank you, Mel. Thank you so much for having me. Now, we've known each other for quite some time, Jen. I was on your podcast, Small Business Made Simple, back on episode 115, and now you are edging towards something like 300 episodes. What an amazing milestone. Mm. I know, I know. It's got to the point, it's like, when will I stop? When will I stop finding something to talk about? I don't know when that will be, but yeah, no, it is. It's getting up there towards 300, which is unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, no, it's a great achievement. Well done. I'd really love for you, before we get into our episode today, to maybe just share with my listeners a bit of an idea about your entrepreneurial journey, because I mentioned quite a few different things in your bio just before. And what has actually got you to where you are today? Oh gosh, a a lot of guts and glory, maybe. I don't know. A lot of just, I'll see how this goes. Not a lot of pre-planning. I actually started my career way back when I'm 49 in law. So law was my passion coming out of school. Every now and then I think I really miss it and I'd like to go back to it. And then I kind of wake up from that dream and decide that was a terrible idea. (laughs) But yeah, so I did that for quite a few years, edging towards 20 years. And as my story goes, my best friend and I had way too much wine to drink one night and we decided to throw in our corporate jobs and we bought a retail business. We literally got out the local newspaper. I live in a regional area. We got out a newspaper, saw what businesses were for sales, like we should buy that one. And we did. And that was kind of my start of my entrepreneurial journey, I guess. Before that, I was running my own property law conveyancing firm, but there wasn't a lot of marketing involved. It was basically, I was probably at the height of that, you know, the property boom that was in the noughties. Uh, type of thing, late 1990s, early noughties. And so I didn't really have to do a lot of marketing. So marketing was kind of, I found my love for that in my retail business. We bought a rundown retail business in a rural area in the middle of the GFC. Like seriously, I don't know what we were thinking of, but I think we just wanted to play shop. We didn't want the stress or anything like that. We decided, you know, let's just buy a business and play shop. But probably about six months in, we realized that we had actually bought a business that we could really make something of. And it's probably where I started to learn my first lessons in business. We, when we bought the shop, both of us were farmer's wives. So we thought, you know, let's have a really beautiful good shop. You know, you can imagine all the beautiful country things and, you know, all those beautiful things for old farmhouses and things like that. But the more we got into it, the more customers who asked us, do you have this and can you get this in and do you have this available? And it was all focused towards the kitchen. There was no kitchen shop in town. 
And so that's when the kitchen queens were born. We decided we flip and we'd like, okay, let's have a kitchen shop. Neither of us can cook to save our lives, like meat and free veg. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing special. So it was a bit of a joke for anyone who knew us that we had made this kitchen shop and it was a great business. We sold it seven years later. And then I went into marketing, just went into, I guess, wanting to share my knowledge that I'd learnt around social media and marketing with other small country businesses or really just other businesses. And that was about nine years ago now. So I've been on this track ever since, just sleeping, breathing, loving, marketing, and hoping that somebody else finds it a little bit like their sunshine, like it is mine. Oh my goodness. What an amazing story. And I just love how you and your friends just bought a business that you didn't have experience in and gave it a go. I mean, that's just absolutely amazing that you gave it a go. And then you realized that there was like a certain niche that was needed in in your market. You met that, you loved what you did and now you're teaching marketing because you learned it along the way. I just think that that's an amazing story, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. The moral of the story is drink a lot of wine. I'm not really sure. (laughs) And make decisions. (laughs) Oh my goodness. That's so hilarious. Um, So today we're actually going to talk about marketing your business in 2024. And I know that you'll have some really great actionable ideas today for my listeners, Jen, but marketing is such a huge area of your business. And I think that we often get so overwhelmed by all of the different things that we could be doing or feel like we should be doing. So I'm Mm. really hoping that you can break it down for everyone today and really give us some areas to focus on, especially as we go into 2024. So where do we start? Yeah, that's such a big question, isn't it? And like, you know, I do the big small business survey with a few other really amazing thought leaders in the business space in Australia. And statistically, it keeps coming back with over like 60% of people do find marketing overwhelming. So if you do find marketing overwhelming, you are definitely in the majority, not the minority. And I think it's because it can be so many things. Like you mentioned in the intro, my new book, Small Town, Big Impact, it's got 107 strategies in it. So there's 107 different ways you can market your business, which is kind of adds to the overwhelm in some ways, except I guess we've got to start with a strategy. And that's kind of where my zone of genius is, is creating strategies for small business owners. So looking at the different elements you need to create a really good strategy for your marketing. But it really all boils back to the really unsexy bits of who is your who, where do they hang out and what do you want to be famous for? Like those three questions, if I could answer those three questions for everyone listening, I could, you know, make your marketing so much simpler for you, like really take away the overwhelm. But if I ever tried to run a program or a course that talked about those three things, no one would buy it. It's so unsexy and it's so boring to sort of go, well, who, who's my customer and where do they hang out and what do I want to be famous for? But it is the essence of what you need to know because if you're on Instagram because you love it, but your customers prefer email or are on LinkedIn, then you know, Instagram becomes a waste of your time. And of course, it's going to feel overwhelming because you're like, I'm doing all these reels and I'm doing all these stories and no one's buying and no one's interacting with me. Well, maybe they're not there. Maybe your buyer's not there or, you know, TikTok comes along and we're all like, let's go and do TikTok because it's like, yeah, but are our people there yet? Like, it's kind of that, yeah, that's how marketing becomes overwhelming is because there's so much you could be doing, but Mm. the thing you need to be doing is hanging out where you're people are yeah and that's a very unsexy thing to find out yeah like you said it is unsexy isn't it and people mm. I think do skip over that because it is so unsexy I did that I did that three years ago oh yeah I know that mm. I did that I did that thing about three years ago it's just like mm. uh, I think you might need to update it yeah and it does because it does change over time as we change as people and as mm. they change our ideal client changes and even our business and office change as well so yeah a really important thing to go back to I just want to touch mm. on something there as well Jen and you talked about marketing strategy how is strategy different from being on TikTok or from you know, doing all of the action items, what's different between a strategy? Because I think that some people kind of get that 
confused between what is a strategy and what is the tactics or the doing things. Yeah. So when I look at a strategy, for me, there's five elements in the strategy, brand awareness, engagement, lead generation, growth, and sales. So when I look at a strategy of whatever your business is, we need to look at, you know, content, what content is engaging, what content is creating lead generation, what content is creating growth in your business, what content is creating sales, and what content is creating creating brand awareness. Now they're not all exclusive. Something that's creating a sale is creating brand awareness and possibly lead generation. Like, so it's not like, you know, you need all those different elements to be different pieces of content. But I find that there are so many businesses out there who never sell and just leave you guessing and make themselves so hard to buy from. But if they would just tell us how to buy from them and what they had to sell, they would make an amazing business. Or some businesses, that's all they do. Buy my candle, buy my shirt, buy my shorts, buy, 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 buy. It's just like, what else have you got for me? <laughs> like, you know, no one likes to be sold to all the time is the reality. And there is the elements in a strategy of selling without selling, which, you know, I guess becomes the storytelling and things that you do so well and things that you teach so well, you know, are all in those. But that for me is what a strategy looks like is, you know, having a look at those five different points and working out how does your content look? No, I, I guess that. compared to those. Yep. And I'm going to pick out something you just said then, selling without selling. I love that idea. First of all, because I think that sometimes we do slip into that. I have to sell. I have to make a sale. So I have to talk about selling all the time. Mm-hmm. Or we're at the other end of the spectrum where we don't do anything and we wonder why people are not buying for us, but we're not actually yep. putting our offers out there, are we? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've just created a a, a course, a nine-week marketing transformation course, but it's my second course. My first course that I did many years ago was Facebook ads for beginners. Now that course isn't for sale anymore, but when it was, it was just like, maybe I need to market that if I want to sell it. (laughs) But there was kind of, there was a barrier that that wasn't a successful course for me because I didn't feel like I was expert enough to sell it. But I knew that my clients needed to know the basics of doing a Facebook or Instagram ad. So lots of my clients got access to that, but there was like a roadblock for me putting myself out there as the person who knew Facebook ads. I just knew three more things than everybody else that, you know, I, that I was in my community, but yeah, like it could have been a great course if I actually marketed it, but I didn't. So it didn't sell. It's just like, there's no one else to blame for the lack of sales in that course, but me. Yeah. Now in my intro, Den, I mentioned that you had started a couple of different communities. So the spend with us and and buy from the bush. So I feel like, you know, a little bit about communities and building communities, but what is the difference between a community and building an audience? Yeah, for me, they seem really different. So for me, I'd say, you know, for an audience, I think of a rock concert. You know, I'm standing up on stage and I'm talking at you. You're my audience watching me. A community, I'm actually out there in the community. You know, they're communicating with each other. They're helping each other. And I'm sort of like the leader who keeps everything in check and keeps it a safe space. And you know, I, you know, people do want to hear from me, but it's not like a rock concert where it's all about me. I feel like audiences, it's kind of like they're down there, I'm up here and I'm talking at them as opposed to, you know, I guess rising tide lifts all boats in sort of a community way. So that's the difference for me, how I think of a community versus an audience. And I think 2024 and beyond and even before this we need to be starting to build communities and stop worrying about how many Instagram followers we've got or how many likes that post got or anything like that because I know for me like the AI AI is it's a freight train heading our way and most people who are in business it's going to affect if it hasn't affected already 
Like I just told you, you know, all about strategy and how I kind of think about strategy. You can go to chat GPT or Bard and type in, give me a six week strategy and, you know, it would spit out something. So that makes me a little bit, I guess, you know, defunct in some way. So if I haven't built a community of people who love the way I talk about things or love the way I teach, then I don't know. I'm pretty buggered if the freight train keeps coming at me. So I've got to build a community because my audience can go anywhere, mm. but my community love me or like the way that I teach, I talk, you know, I do marketing. So that is kind of like the difference. Mm. No, and I think that's a, an amazing explanation as well. I really love how you differentiate it between the rock star being on the stage as, to po- as opposed to being amongst the people. Given that your communities have been so successful, Jen, and maybe you want to talk to how successful they have been as well, what are your tips in building a strong community? Yeah, so my Buy for a Bush business community that started back in October 2019 And it's pretty hard to imagine right now, but again, you know, I live in a rural area. I'm a farmer's wife. We were in horrific drought back then. I just think just before the big bushfires that, you know, were in Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, that 2020 Christmas. And the one thing I know about living rurally, if farmers don't have money, towns don't have money. So if farmers don't have a good year, the chemist doesn't have a good year. The news agents doesn't have a good year. The clothes shop doesn't have a good year. And it doesn't even mean their farmers have to spend the money there it's just more money in the town like there's just more money circulating in towns so that's why I created that first community was kind of like well you know buy from the bush was a trending hashtag but people weren't quite sure how to use that or how to get you know some traction from that but everyone knew how to make a Facebook post. So that's why that community was created way back then. I'm not actually involved in that community anymore. I retired from that, sold my shares and resigned as a director in June last year. But I think it's 365,000 people in that community. So it's a massive community. And what made that a successful community, I think, was having a strong leader and a safe space because communities create their own communities. So I didn't go and find 365,000 people to join. I, you know, invited my friends, my clients, they invited their friends, you know, like a bit of a tree branch effect. Like it just, they, everyone just kept inviting everyone because it was a safe space because it was a way of giving back to communities and things like that. And without kind of getting on my rural high horse too much, there was a lot of money donated to a lot of charities back then, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Now I can tell you hand on heart, I never saw a penny of that as a farmer in a rural area in drought. My community didn't see a penny of that. So I'm not saying that there was anything wrong with that, but it's just like, my community, you can actually buy from the person and put the money straight back into their wallet. Like there's no going through a a charity who then people have to apply for grants, who then have to do this, who have to do that. The money goes straight in there. And that community has injected, I think the last tally was something like $8.5 million back into the rural economy. So it, it created itself by, you know, having that safe place and have a place where people are happy to invite their friends, their family into, that's kind of the key, but also having that strong leadership. So having a community isn't all about you. It's about the community. Yes, you want to lead it. Yes, you want to make it a safe space, but the most successful ones where, you know, a Facebook group, for instance, is a perfect example, you know, you might lead it, but you know, Paul is in there saying, oh, you know, I need a really good program for this. And John answers and Sam answers and then Peter answers. And then about six times in, you go and answer because you're like, well, I be- you know, everyone else is, <laughs> I better also say something type of thing. So it creates a community. It's just not everyone sitting on the sideline waiting for the one person to answer. It's mm-hmm. shared knowledge, which mm-hmm. I think is amazing and a very good way to build your business. Mm-hmm. And it also sounds from what you've just said, Jen, as well, there's a shared purpose. There is a reason mm-hmm. for the community to be, to exist. So yeah. once we have a common purpose, then that kind yeah. of attracts people as well. So that's the first thing that we could be looking at in 2024 with our marketing is building communities over audiences. Is there anything else? 
There was a really interesting thing that came out of, I mentioned earlier how I did the big small business survey. The 2023 results were released in December and there was a really interesting stat in there that I can't remember the exact percentage, sorry, but I did know that like the top opportunity of the people who did the survey, their biggest opportunity they saw in 2024 were partnerships and collaborations. So I thought that was really interesting that people are really starting to think, again, it's about community. Again, it's kind of like, who's got my audience that isn't my competition that we could share our audiences, collaborate or partner together to build my business. So again, you know, I thought that was really interesting and a brilliant idea. Like how can, who's got your audience so you don't have to go out and find a brand new audience. Of course, you should be nurturing the audience you've got, but who is also has those people that aren't your competition, that you've got something to offer them and they've got something to offer you that you could share and build your business that way. And there's so many different ways that you can collaborate as well, isn't there, Jen? Like you don't have to necessarily be on a podcast with someone. You can go live with them. You could do an interview series. You could share some knowledge. You could just share each other's free resources. There's lots of different ways that you can collaborate. It doesn't have to be a big deal. No, you could share email addresses, like, you know, put a little thing in your newsletter about them. They could do the same with you. You could go live in their communities, like you say. You know, if you've never done an Instagram live or a Facebook live, doing it with someone else is a great opportunity because then you don't have to do all the talking. And if you run out of things to say, they will help you, you know, and so you can just have a bit of a chat like, you know, you and I are doing right now, Mal, like, but you're getting your face, your offerings, your knowledge in front of an audience member who perhaps doesn't know you just yet, which is great opportunity. Facebook groups, like you going in there, giving value, answering questions where you can and things like that. But most Facebook groups have a day where you can actually sell, you can actually put in an offer. So look out for those. Don't just go there for the days where the offer is though, like make sure you are part of the community. But yeah, again, you know, if your audience is there, it's a great way to collaborate with someone else. Yeah, great. So we've spoken about communities. We've spoken about partnerships and collaborations. You did mention something before about the AI freight train. And I have a feeling that embracing AI or, you know, learning about AI may be another way that we can potentially look at marketing our business. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that, yeah, this time last year, Probably 90% of the population had never heard of ChatGPT. So it's quite amazing how quickly it's taken the world by storm. But yeah, there's BARD, which is Google's ChatGPT type of thing. But it's just embracing that new technology and being curious. I think if you haven't got a word of the year for 2024 already, make it curious because I think that is probably your best serving word. I think it's the best word for any small business owners. And I think the best entrepreneurs, and I don't love that word, but the best entrepreneurs are so curious. How do I need, I've got this problem. Where do I find a solution for that? You know, I AppSumo, if you've never been on there, that's a really great place. It's like a marketplace for up and coming tech and up and coming programs and software. Again, you're going there, I've got this problem. How do I solve it? You're looking for those AI options, following some AI experts. I don't know, Mal, in your world, whether you've got some AI experts. For me, it's Tracy Sheehan, the digital guide. You know, I follow her. I love attending her webinars where she's got 10 new pieces of AI for me to go down 10 new rabbit holes looking at in all my free time. But yeah, yeah. Like Mel, do you have anyone in your world that you'd recommend to follow? I don't have anyone specifically, no. And mm. But I do really back up what you say, you know, find someone that you like and that you trust and just try, just mm. give it a go. Because like you said, it is a bit of a freight train AI. And I truly believe that it's going to make such a big impact on people's businesses and it's going to make such an impact on the way that we market our businesses and create content for our businesses as well that we do yeah. need to just at least be aware and on top of it right now. Like I I truly believe that there always needs to be the essence of you. So I don't believe that AI can 100% take all of your content off your plate 
then no. still needs to be part of you. And you mentioned storytelling before earlier in yeah. the episode as well. There needs to be an element of that as well. But yeah, just get in there and try. Yeah, look, I spend about half an hour a week. So not a huge amount of every week, but half an hour a week seeking new blogs, new articles. I've subscribed to an email list called Ben's Bites. You know, I, I browse through those, just trying to keep up with what's happening, what's changing. I do it for marketing as well and social media and, you know, just to kind of see, you know, what is actually out there. Yeah. And just trying to keep up to date because the world moves pretty fast as we all know. Yeah. But I a hundred percent agree. I, I'm pretty happy that my job is to cure and I'm pretty happy that yours is to Mel because I really don't think that AI is that good. Uh, and perhaps by the time it is, I'll be ready to retire anyway, <laughs> because it's not a human, but it is a really, for me, I'm on chat GPT four or five times a day. How do you do this? I even ask it to do mathematical equations. I had a, a sale on a product the other day and I'm like, if I sell it for this, what's the discount on that? And it was like 48%. It's just like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, so I'm always asking it all all sorts of different questions. But I think the other thing in 2024 is going to be, uh, and I'm not an expert in this, and it's something that I'm wanting to learn more and more and am learning more and more, is SEO and keywords and things like that. I think they're going to become so much more important, even in our social media content. I think like according to Instagram, the, I can't think of the guy's name who I follow on Instagram that works for Instagram. Hashtags are dying. Hashtag, hashtags are kind of going to be a thing of the past and it's going to be keywords and content and key phrases and things like that. So again, we've got to kind of take that SEO look at our social media content if we want to be found for something. We're not necessarily going to be found just by using that particular hashtag now. It's actually going to have to be part of the keywords we use in the content we create. So there's lots of little changes. And for some people, that's going to be a big change. And for other people, that's not because you've got your expert subject and you talk about it a lot and the keywords are there. Great tips. Thanks for the, all of those, Jen. So we've spoken about communities. We've spoken about collaborations. We've spoken about tech, including AI and SEO. Is there anything else that we need to be aware of going into this year? No, I, I think I'm going to go back to the boring, unsexy bits of be where your people are. Like really sit back if you can spend an hour, half an hour and really think, write down all the places that you are hanging out and just really look at the stats. You know, are you where your people are? You know, have a look at that ideal client that you think they are and, you know, then go and have a look at your insights or go and have a look at your Google Analytics and see, you know, is this actually working for you or do you need to mix up your marketing a little bit? Do you need to perhaps do some test and measure on a, you know, a different type of platform or do you need to bring in more human to human marketing? You know, that do you need to show up more for your audience and build that community and be that leader? Is that the element of your marketing that's missing this year? That if you only could improve that, then, you know, your marketing will, I, I guess, create more sales and more reach and more community. Beautiful advice, Jen. Thank you so much for that. And I agree that, you know, focus on the human and that is where you will experience so much personal growth as well as business growth. So thank you for those tips. Now, before we finish up today, Jen, I'm all about, all about women, not just talking about their superpowers, but owning them. So what is your superpower? Gosh, that's such a big question, isn't it? Does it anyone is. else have trouble like this? For me, look, my superpower is probably community building. I love community building I think it's I think it's everybody's superpower if they actually take it out for a bit of a run but I feel like if people just looked at their audiences and started to look at them as a community I think you would see the power of building that community if you look at the communities you belong to now and perhaps what you buy from those communities and then reverse engineer that I think it will really start to make more sense in your head but for me it's probably community and yeah connecting and building communities. 
Yep. I would agree from what I know of you, Jen, a hundred percent, definitely you're all about the connection, the people, the humans and the community as well. I also just want to ask you, do you have any final parting words of wisdom? I guess if you haven't set your 2024 goals, like I know you were probably a couple of months in by now, but do that because, you know, if you don't have goals for me, you know, it's like, you know, if you don't know which road to take, any road will do. So set some goals. And for me, like I live by ready, fire, aim. That's my, that's my strategy in life is get ready, fire and aim as I go, like tidy it up as I go, re, you know, fix it up as I go type of thing. But just, just test the market with something. I was speaking to someone the other day and they're like, they're going to change direction and they're just building the course and they're building content and all this sort of thing. I'm like, do you know if anyone wants to buy it yet? And they're kind of like, oh, I'm like, how about you put it out there and just make sure that, you know, you get some reaction or, you know, start a wait list and see if someone wants to buy it first before you spend 50 hours creating something. Cause I think we've all been there and done that where we've created something that's been a flop because we actually forgot to ask our community if they wanted to buy it. So true. So true. Sometimes we do get really stuck at the whiteboard. I think that's what Tara Mm -hmm. Moore says in playing big. She says we get stuck at creating at the whiteboard. So we forget about who we're doing it for and why we're doing it but we just, you know, absorbed with the creating side of things. So yeah. Yeah. Like my nine week transformation program that I spoke about earlier, that's been on my whiteboard for five years. Mm -hmm. Like it's literally, well, probably not even my whiteboard, the back of my door in my office. I look at it every day. And so my ready fire aim was, we'll put it in your book. So in the back of my book, there's a QR code that you can go and you know, either buy the course or learn more. But the course wasn't created. But when the book went to the printer, I was like, crap, now I really do have to create that course because someone's got to stand the QR code and it's not going to be there. And yeah, I guess push, push yourself a little bit. You know, nothing changes if nothing changes at the end of the day. Beautiful words of wisdom. And where can people buy a copy of your small town, big impact book? Yeah. So just head to my website, socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. You'll actually see my face with a book and you can just click there and go to my shop and buy it. And congratulations on publishing and releasing your book. It's such an amazing feat, not your first one, but it's such an amazing feat anyway. So congratulations. And I'll make sure that I pop the links to all of thank those you. things that you've mentioned in the show notes as well. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Jen, and sharing my your pleasure. wisdom with my listeners. I truly appreciate you being here. Yeah, no, it's been a blast. Thanks so much, Mel.